Joining me to talk music today is a man that gets up every morning and puts on the same clothing every day. Just like a cartoon character, he puts on his black pants and a red skivvy because Simon Price is the red wiggle. Hot potato, hot potato. Hot potato, hot potato. Hot potato, hot potato. Potato. Now, this year marks 25 years of the Wiggles, and they've had so many hits. And almost every year, they top the highest earning Australian bands list. They just outsold Coldplay the other day for the most ticket sales in under 24 hours. They are a monster of a children's entertainment band. Fruit salad, yummy, yummy. Fruit salad. Yummy, yummy. And about three years ago, three of the original members decided to wrap it up, leaving an opening for Simon Price to join as the new Red Wiggle. He joins me now. Simon, how are you doing? Good. How are you going? Good. Simon, where do I find you today? Um, I'm in uh, Ringwood in Melbourne. We're about to do our fourth show today. We've wow. been on tour since March. <laughs> that is grueling. <laughs> yeah, so we're, this is a regional Australian tour and uh, we pretty much do four shows a day, day in, day out and see most of the country. It's, it's pretty incredible. You must be incredibly fit because I imagine well, there's a lot of running around and things. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like an hour aerobics class. <laughs> <laughs> hour in, hour out. Yeah, it's good. Now, as you're touring around, I imagine you're uh, driving around in the big red car. Who has control of the stereo? Uh, well, uh, Anthony's in control of the stereo. Emma drives. Anthony's in control of the stereo. Lockie sleeps up the back, and I'm just a, a quiet little uh, passenger up the back as well. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay. Well, what do you like to listen to when you're not wiggling? Well, I tend to listen to more classical music. My background is mainly sort of music, theatre, opera and classical. But I listen to everything, um, you know, all sorts of music, really. Well, for a lot of kids, The Wiggles is their first introduction to music. Uh, was classical something that you were introduced to as a young child? Yeah, it was. My Both my grandparents were opera singers, so I kind of grew up around that world at a, at a very young age. And, uh, you know, I think the beauty of the Wiggles and what we try to do is introduce as many different types of music as we possibly can through, you know, we do folk, we do classical, we do light pop, we do Irish, we do all sorts of things, you know. So I think it's about trying to introduce as many different styles of music to children from as young age as possible to hopefully get the real appreciation for it, which they can take throughout their life. I'm yet to see the Wiggles metal album. Yes, well, maybe we might leave Thrash. (laughs) (laughs) We might leave Thrash. I think the children probably do that on their own. (laughs) So I guess that's where the inspiration and idea for the Carnival of the Animals, your new album that is a a classical piece from the the 1800s, you've sort of put together with the Adelaide Symphony Orchestra. I'm guessing that's where that all came from. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I'd, I'd heard it as a child. My nan used to play it to me a little bit when I was younger, and then I kind of rediscovered it uh, recently, and... I was having a chat to Anthony and the other Wiggles about wanting to record and do an oration for the Carnival of the Animals. At the same time I was having a chat about that, the ABC were talking to Paul Fields, who's the general manager of the Wiggles, about doing a version of the Carnival of the Animals. They had a recording of the Adelaide Symphony Orchestra and were asking if we wanted to do something with it. So I kind of jumped at the opportunity and I was wrote a narration for it and kind of um, just gave a, a new little twist on it to appeal to a Wiggles audience, which is, you know, the early childhood, the preschool audience. And uh, it was about trying to write and create a narration which added to the storytelling and the music. Didn't want to take away from it, just sort of added and enhanced it. And I've been really, really proud of it and really happy with the way it turned out. When did you first hear this piece back in the day? Well, I'm not exactly sure. I would have been under 10, I guess, when I first heard it. So that's 30-odd years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's funny, it stays with you. And I, th- I think that's the, the hope with this as well, just to introduce it to a new generation of children that it then stays with them for their life. And occasionally if you'll watch a movie or something, you'll hear a, a piece of music and you think, that's so familiar. And, you know, it was from the calm of the animals. And, you know, you just hope that those kind of... Um, that music you hear can stay with you for your, your lifetime and form an appreciation of music, you know? Well, I had a listen earlier and I was sort of listening to it and I was like, I reckon this was in a Disney film or something. And then when I looked into it, it was in Fantasia. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's been in a lot of different things. It's been a lot of, um, I think Tim Burton's used it a few times in movies and all. Yeah. So I think it's been in lots of different movies. There, there's a couple of pieces that are known as the Aquarium and the Swan and probably two of the more familiar ones to people and they get used quite a bit in various things. 
heard this music when you were 10 years old and then that sort of gave you the inspiration in life to sort of pursue music? Was that always the idea? Well, no, it wasn't at all. I, I kind of, I mean, I was around music, but then I ended up in the, went down the sporting road as a, as a you know, young boy and a young man, was playing a lot of sport. Then I went did sports science at university when I first left school. And then I, I left that and then ended up um, going to drama school and studied as an actor. Very different. And then I, yeah, I know, really different. It was, I think my parents were in shock <laughs> when they said, what do you really want to do? And I said, I think I want to be an actor. And they're like, huh, where did this come from? So I went down that road and did three years of study at a drama school in the Pian, which is in Western Sydney, and then left that and then kind of started learning how to sing from there. So I then went to a, a colleague of my nan's who used to sing with my nan and had singing lessons with him. Found that I had a bit of a voice and started doing music theatre and did a bit of an opera. And it's just, it's kind of grown from there. It's interesting. I asked my little nephews, I'm like, what can you tell me about the red wiggle? And they were yeah. like, he likes opera. He likes opera. And I was like, yeah, right. that really surprises me that that's your, I don't know, that's your thing. Did you bring that to the table and go, hey, what about we sort of work this into my character, if you will? Yeah, not, not, not directly is that. I think what, what happens and has happened with the wiggles, and it's always been the same with the wiggles, is we are just ourselves. So we bring ourselves to it. So the Simon that you see on television or on stage is, is just is me, is an extension of me and what I, who I am and what I do and what I love. And, and so I think yeah, that's okay. just part of how it's evolved. Right. So there really is a narcolepsy issue in the wiggles then? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> do you think classical's on the comeback? Well, I think it'll always be around. I think it, it finds different forms, you know, and people sort of introduce it in different ways. And for a while there with the, the groups like Il Devo, which uh, are classical based, but they have a bit more of a wider appeal to people. Sometimes mm. I think, you know, the opera world and the classical world is seen as a bit uh, elitist and is not that inclusive of everyone, yet, and yet the music itself is. And if I think the aim through this with the Wiggles and the Carnival of the Animals is to try to introduce classical music at a really young age, that they might form that love for it and appreciation, which they then, when they're older, they might want to see an opera or go to a classical concert or, you know, things like that. It's almost making it more approachable. Yeah, I think so. I think what music is, music should just be part of everything that we do, no matter what genre it is. And I think it is. It's trying to just break down those little barriers a bit about classical music so people just enjoy listening to it for what it is and hopefully go and see it as well. Now, this year marks 25 years of the Wiggles. Did you think you'd be chucking on the skivvy at one point back then? No, no, not not for a second. You know, <laughs> it's funny. It's funny how, how things work. You know, life just opens up doors, doesn't it? And sometimes you step through them, sometimes you don't. And this is just one of these opportunities that happened in my life, which there was no way I was going to refuse and, and or turn down. It's been a wonderful experience and, you know, one I would never take back and very thankful for, to be on. 25 years ago, you would have been doing your sporting degree. Yeah, that, well, that's right. And I actually met the Wiggles when they started because I, I was just finishing my sporting degree and went to drama school. And Anthony brother, the Blue Wiggle, his brother, now wife, I went to drama school with. So I met them all the way back then. And then for quite a few years, I did a lot of their backing vocals and a lot of the deep voice stuff on their recordings for years and years and years. So I'd sort of been around it, around them for a while, but not really understanding how much they toured or what they did. I just popped into the studio every now and then and sang a few songs and then left. And then, yeah, it just kind of evolved my relationship with them that uh, I'm in this position now wearing the red skin. Yeah, we're doing four shows a day in the, uh, the grueling <laughs> yeah, 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 workout. Yeah, I've got a lot to answer, a lot to answer for. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of my favourite things is hearing kids' responses to different things, and I imagine you get them quite regularly, kids coming up to you at shows and, and sharing strange, bizarre thoughts that's the first thing that pops into their head. Well, a lot of the ones we get are... How did you come out of the television? <laughs> so there's a lot of, we go out through the show and collect roses for Dorothy Bones for Wags, bows for Emma, all those sort of things. And you walk through and you get to meet the children, you high five them, have a bit of a chat. And most of it is that I watch you on television, but how, how, how did you get out of the television? And then for <laughs> me, it's, you're so big, <laughs> you know, I'm six foot four and these little children looking at me going, wow, he's so big. But, uh, children, they're a great audience. What I learned very early on, they'll tell you or you'll realise quickly when you're not engaging with them because they'll just turn away. <laughs> well, I was chatting to Charlie from High Five and I said, weren't you embarrassed when you first started doing it? She goes, no, no, no. If you think you're going to be embarrassed, you are not in the right position. Uh, kids see mm. right through hesitation or embarrassment and go, no, nope, not for me. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. You have to give everything 100% commitment and there is no embarrassment. There's no apologies and uh, children do. They see right through it all. 
and they will just completely switch off if you're not engaging with them and they give you feedback instantly with what, what, what you're doing on stage. Well, Simon, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Aiden. Cheers, mate.